Could you discuss this whole Caden Proctor situation on your show? I'm checking in from Tallahassee, Florida. Well, thank you, Tate. And absolutely I can. Now, Caden Proctor, if you're listening and you don't really follow recruiting a whole lot, you may think, oh, this is a recruiting segment. I'm tuning out. No, no, it's, it's a lot more than that. So just, just stick with me for a second or two here. Who is Caden Proctor? For those of you who may be tuned out on recruiting, I'll tell you who Caden Proctor is. An animal. In the best of ways. He is 6'7", 330 pounds. He's an offensive tackle. Top rated OT in the country from Des Moines, Iowa. Was committed to Iowa for a long time until Nick Saban decided he wanted him. And he flipped to Alabama on signing day or a couple of days before signing day. And all's well that ends well, right? Not so fast. Rumors have surfaced. Allegations have surfaced. Now, I'm going to let you take a wild guess at what those rumors sounded like. Are you thinking something along the lines of, there's Nick Saban dropping another bag, there's Bama coming in and buying another player, which is one of my favorite allegations because it's rarely as it seems, and even if it was in 2023, it's kind of sort of legal, but be that as it may, let us dive in. Because I referenced this just without naming that kid's name three weeks ago. Three weeks ago on this show, I did a segment. It took off, but I kept the names anonymous. Caden Proctor was absolutely the player I was talking about. And I told you, some big dogs are going to flip some players late, and you're going to think it's because of NIL. And I'm telling you, because in some cases, I knew the numbers associated with the NIL offers. Some players are going to go to big programs and take less money than they're being offered by other programs. I told you that three weeks ago. You remember that? Okay, well, now that it's out in the open, I'm telling you, Caden Proctor was one of them. But not a lot of you, some of you didn't believe that. And some of you still don't believe it about Caden Proctor. And so the allegation has been floating out there. I have not addressed it on the show until now. The allegation's been out there that, oh, Bama just outbid Iowa. And here's the thing. If you're a player and someone is alleging something about you that's not true, in other words, you're just kind of a hired gun, you're a mercenary, you just went to the highest bidder, kind of make you mad, wouldn't it? Especially if it's not true. Now, if it's true, it's whatever. Good for you. But if it's not true, wouldn't you want to set the record straight? Well, Caden Proctor did set the record straight. And so this is a quote. It's a few days old now, but it resurfaced today. Here's the quote from Caden Proctor. I don't want to come into the school and everyone thinks that I'm one of the best players there already. I want to grow. And that's not how I grow. I got to get hit in the mouth before I can grow. Jesse, do we have the other quote? The quote just about the offer itself? Because if we don't, I will just pull this bad boy up right here. Okay, well, I am going to pull my own personal account up, and I'm going to read you verbatim what was said. Quote from Caden Proctor. When these stories come out, I hope they understand it wasn't about NIL money because I'm not getting as much money as Iowa would have paid me. Unquote. Now, I love that for two reasons. Number one, I actually know it to be true. Uh, but the second reason was I knew what the reaction was going to be. Almost no one out there who was alleging that Bama just came in with a bigger offer backed off of their allegation. You have got anonymous sourcing on Twitter, on your local message board, some dude who called into a talk radio station, and they've convinced you of one thing. The player himself <laughs> comes out voluntarily and says, no, that's not the way it happened. And, and no, no later was that said. Then I saw people calling that kid a liar. Like, you've got a better source than the player himself. I'm not saying a player is technically incapable of lying. I'm just saying I highly doubt you've got a source better than him or closer to the situation than him. In a situation where it wouldn't matter if you did get outbid. Anyway, so a lot of folks around Iowa were mad because they felt like they got misled. Okay, if you're an Iowa Hawkeye fan, I want to make sure that I stress I'm not hating on you. I'm not trying to dunk on you. I'm not making fun of you. I got plenty of respect for the Iowa program, especially when it comes to developing that position. It's a kid from your backyard. I'd be salty just like you are. And you feel like your staff may have been misled and you're mad that he stayed committed to the last minute. So there are several legitimate reasons why you're less than thrilled about this if you're an Iowa fan. I am not directing this at you guys. There are a lot of other folks out there who are totally agnostic, couldn't care less about either program. They just want to be heard. And those folks are the ones that I want to speak to for just a second. I got about 10 of you I've been going back and forth with. And there is a sizable group still out there 
that claims there's no way this kid just flat out picked Alabama, even for less money. It has to be that Nick Saban came in and Alabama dropped a bag. And that's the only way that an offensive tackle chooses to go to Alabama over Iowa. And I told you last week, and I told you two weeks ago, this was going to happen. Kids were going to roll with a program like Alabama, and they were going to take less upfront money to do it, and people were not going to be able to accept it. And it happened in this case. I know the details behind the scenes. It happened. The kid flat out took less money, and a lot of folks don't believe it. I just ask you, has anyone thought this through for like more than two seconds? Can we please think this? It doesn't even have to be critically because this is pretty much common sense. A five-star offensive tackle chose to go to Alabama, and I got like 100 folks in my DMs telling me there's no way that happens unless they bought him. What in the world are we talking about right now? So, so basically, it is beyond the realm of comprehension that a kid could look at the greatest head coach of all time, running the greatest dynasty in the history of this sport, an apex program who has mastered the art of developing his position. Bama has sent seven offensive tackles to the first round since 2009. The entire Big 12 has only sent five. Bama sent seven offensive tackles to the first round. The entire ACC has only sent six. The entire Big 10 has only sent 10 of them. That's including Iowa which has done a good job. They've sent four of them. But Bama's, Bama has outdone entire conferences in developing this kid's position into becoming a multimillionaire. There's no way that kid could want to go to Bama, though, unless they bought him. No, 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 no. Even in a world where NIL is fully legal, programs that are capable of doing this for the back end of your college career, they don't have to pay as much on the front end. They don't have to outbid everyone on the front end. And here's the other part of this that's going to take a little while to grasp. Geography doesn't mean what it used to mean in recruiting. This kid's from Des Moines, Iowa, and that was why there was a close tie to Iowa, and that's why Iowa is at the forefront of this conversation. The thing about it is that's the only reason Iowa was at the forefront of this conversation. If he was from Prescott, Arizona, if he was from Tampa, Florida, if he was from Chesapeake, Virginia, Bama would have still been in the conversation because they recruit nationally. Iowa would not have been. And I'm not knocking kids from Iowa for going to Iowa. What I am trying to get across to you is an 18-year-old does not look at ties to home like a 58-year-old does. You were born and you grew up in a generation where home meant a whole heck of a lot more than it does to them, for better or for worse. And it's because of this. It's just because of technology. Technology makes the world really small. And it makes you feel like Arizona is next door to New York. Because you can, well, you can get there really quick, but you communicate with people there every day. You didn't do that 30 or 40 years ago. And so it's nothing for a kid to leave home now. It's nothing at all for that to happen. I hope it makes sense because it's not going to be the last time you see this. And I think that's probably going to be an exercise we have to repeat over and over again of some major program came in late, a kid flipped, and you get mad because you think the only reason that happened is because they just have more money than me. That's not the only deciding factor. In fact, uh, there are a lot of default situations out there where you'd get smoked in a recruitment head up and you're going to have to outbid big time the big dog program. It's the inverse of the way you think it happens. You think the big dog program comes in and they outbid you. It's not that at all. You're going to have to double up their offer. Because all things equal, that kid's getting way more going to play for them than he is for you. So you've got to sweeten the pot. Not them. They, Alabama doesn't have to sweeten the pot to get an offensive tackle. Are you crazy? You have to sweeten the pot. Even Iowa. And Iowa, next to Bama, has been as good as anyone at developing that position. Even Iowa, for an in-state kid, has to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me, that's how we keep this entire thing free.